All right, here we are. Here What's we up? are. Hey, Elizabeth, how you doing? Here's a video for you. And anybody else who might have signed on to Patreon in the last like ten minutes, by the way, um, this video is going to be on the Patreon as part of the uh, the first episode of the Uncanny Spirits Club. Yeah, the very first one. Um, and very that's first. going to be uh, something that's going to be specific only to patrons. Um, we're going to get uh, different spirits every so often, probably mm -hmm. once a month, uh, give or take, and uh, and taste them for you and have some stories about it, compare it to some of our favorite spirits of the same kind of type. Yep, sure. And, um, and you know, we have some shenanigans. It's going to be probably a half hour, 45 minute video, give or take, um, depending, not super long. But um, you will have access to this probably in the next couple of days as soon as we can get it uploaded. Um, I got to get the login stuff from, from out here because he set that up and then I'll upload it probably either when I get home tonight or tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, let me turn the camera around. Oh, I actually can't do that on this one because it's some regular phone camera. So, let me just turn that around. I hope you guys can see it just fine. This is... Uh, let me wipe that off a little bit so you can kind of see yeah, it. it looks cool. Right? We had it in the freezer. This is uh, number nine Iowa whiskey. It's actually produced by the band Slipknot. Uh, you don't have to be into heavy music. Here you go. Gotta go down for a little bit. There you go. You don't have to be into heavy music to really enjoy that. Make sure I don't cover the mic. Um, oh, good call. Good but, call. Uh, it, it looks good. I mean, we've yeah. poured it for ourselves right here. We're going to give some tasting right here. It's a corn mash uh, and a grain alcohol whiskey. So it's like moonshine and whiskey. So we'll yeah. see what it delivers. Hopefully it delivers on tasting this. So. That's right. So let's grab our glasses here. Our, our mason jars or... Perry Mason? Perry Mason. You might be investigating this right now. You know, go ahead and... To the uncanniest. There we go. Plunker right there. Down the hatchers. Okay. Ooh. 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 It's heavy stuff. It's Ooh. heavy stuff. It's definitely got the... Oh, uh, man. The moonshine feel to it. Mm. It warms warm. you up. We put it in the freezer to cool it down. Um, Rob's got a water chaser. Got to. He's a bit of a child. Yeah. I'm trying to just, you know, take it straight up, trying to be as stereotypically uh, manly as possible. Um, I I did not go out immediately after I bought this and also buy, like, a jacked-up pickup truck because there's only so much manliness, <laughs> I think, that you can stand in a video like this. Right. So the whiskey will have to do. Um, <laughs> to me, it, it has a hint of... You, you can... You can tell in the back end what's in it. The only thing I don't like about this whiskey and whiskeys like this, it reminds me of a Kentucky uh, bourbon style whiskey where the back end is real harsh. So it's got like a real acidic taste. The acidic part is what I'm not a fan of. I don't mind the whiskey taste in itself. Like the first like drink is good, but then it like the acidic part kind of sits. You know what I mean? So the water kind of knocks that back. And I know you probably, mm. probably like, that's baby. Like, well, you know, I mean, <clears throat> one thing that, uh, and this is actually an article that I read from uh, from Elizabeth Whittenberry, by the way, who's right now, as far as I know, the prime um, person who's going to be interested in our whiskey videos. So um, <clears throat> I read one of the articles that you shared uh, about how some people, they'll, they don't dilute the alcohol with a bunch of water, but they'll put in a few drops to open up the flavor. And I do that, and I like it. It's a great idea. It does kind of open things up a little bit and kind of mellow stuff out. Um, <clears throat> so it might be something that uh, that we might start doing on a regular basis with our whiskey. Maybe just add a couple drops. It's, it's not something that I think we would require for something like Crown. Um, Crown is already, it, it's got a level of smoothness that's, that you really don't need to do too much to it. No, you really don't. You can mix it, you can take it straight up and it's fine. Um, but this is some definite, like, heavy near-bourbon kind of stuff. And um, and putting a couple drops in might help to, to open that up and kind of mellow it out a little bit. Because one of the things you can tell is there's a little bit of cloudiness that goes in there when you add a little bit of water. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of the reaction that you get out of it. It just opens up the flavor a little bit. So, and Rob's trying it out right now. He hasn't done this before. It actually takes the back end acidic part out, and it does open that flavor. Like I, I'm not restrained to to that uh, you know mm. feeling that you get with some whiskeys, especially bourbons. You get that a lot with um, 
with with whiskeys like Maker's <clears throat> Mark, um, which I am not a real big fan of. I'm not a fan of Kentucky bourbons, just because I like the smoothness of a Canadian whiskey. Um, Canadian whiskey to me seems like it's the smoothest that you can get that I've had. Now, if you have some recommendations out there, whoever's watching this, um, rip forward it to us. And then if it's within a price range that we can afford, mm -hmm. we'll look for it. Um, speaking of price, speaking of price before, uh, before you go oh, too right. much farther, uh, yeah. this cost, uh, you can get this directly from a website, uh, slipknotwhiskey.com, which is probably connected to their main fan website. So if you're a fan of the band, you probably can make the snip at slipknot.com. If you're not, slipknotwhiskey.com. There's two kinds that you can get. This was $44, I believe, mm -hmm. um, before shipping. Uh, shipping's kind of hefty because alcohol shipping is always pretty always, hefty. Because it's a liquid. So I ended up paying like almost 60 something dollars total Jeez. for the whole thing. <clears throat> but uh, but again, that's shipping um, to Ohio. That's shipping to Ohio. Uh, there's another level. They have another bottle that's like sixty dollars sixty four dollars or something like that which i didn't buy because that with shipping would have been like Close 80 some dollars and you know i like some whiskey right. but i don't have that much money for the whiskey right. so anyway so price point uh 44 dollars for the slipknot number nine um so far it's all right uh i'm not a big fan of the band personally they have like one or two songs that i like but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush out and uh and buy their albums the whiskey is not bad i wouldn't buy it to be honest, I wouldn't be like, you know, Spider brought it over, so I, I'm enjoying it with him, and it's it's tasty, but it wouldn't be something I would buy. And I'm very picky about liquor because liquor is one of those things that if you get a bad, um, a bad bottle, which I have, we've gotten bad bottles before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The one that was, uh, what was that? I, I'm not gonna mention it, but it was like an apple, but it was super syrupy sweet. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I don't like about flavored whiskeys is when they make them syrupy sweet. So you have like an apple crown and it's delicious because it has the right amount of apple taste and the right amount of whiskey taste. It kind of blends together and kind of sits nicely on your palate. Then you have a couple others, which I won't, I won't, uh, I won't mention because I don't remember the name to begin with, that uh, have a syrupy sort of sticky medicine-y um, cough syrupy kind of taste that 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 feels more diabetes than actually um whiskey to me and like you can only take a couple of sips before you like the syrupy and then you what you have to do with those though is you have to mix them and the thing with whiskey is i really don't like mixing my whiskey i like to drink it pretty much straight mm. uh, the drops of water here were just because it that back end is a little too rough. Oh, that's the thing, though. That's something that, that right. professional like whiskey tasters and stuff do. They right. do that with scotches. Right. And, I mean, I, when I put the drops in, it, it, it took it out. It took that acidic kind of like sit here um, out. Uh, what I – let me give it a quick taste. Um, and while he's doing that, by the way, um, I, I'm enjoying it for what it is, yeah. but it's definitely a sipping whiskey. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend people sit around and do shots of this unless you want to get pretty, uh, pretty messed up. Unless you want to lay on the floor. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get messed up. This is this is hangover fuel. This is on the level of like those high grade tequilas. Yeah. That that'll just knock you out. They they might be good for a couple shots, but then you're gonna be done. So this is definitely a sipping. You you don't like I told them usually when we get a bottle of Crown we'll usually finish the bottle. Easy. It's easy. And we spend a few hours. We sober up. We're all good again. But um. This is not a, a one night no. bottle no. drainer. This is something you no. I'll probably spend the next couple weeks chipping away at, yeah. uh, maybe like a little bit in the evenings here and there, because um, I'll probably end up taking most of this back home. Yeah, we'll probably end up having maybe two more glasses, and when I say glasses, I mean probably like a dram there, a dram basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that'll be that because I like this is this is hangover whiskey if you drink too much. I know. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that, if you're not careful, you end up uh, waking people up in your house by being too loud, <laughs> maybe crying a little bit, uh, maybe sleeping in the wrong part of the house. You, you know? do too much of this stuff, you might be peeping your guts out, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially because of the acidicness of it. Uh, to me, like, if I didn't put a little bit of water, like a little bit of drops of water to dilute it, and I wouldn't say dilute it, but I would say to open up that flavor, mm. um, it would probably, like, sit wrong in your stomach yeah you know it's it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a sipping or it's not a a uh multiple 
glasses more than probably, I would say three, four if you're adventurous and you have nothing else to do for the day. Uh, but like Crown, it's easy to go through a bottle of Crown because of how mm. smooth it tastes. Um, I'm feeling pretty decent right now. It's, it's kind of See? settling in a little yep. bit. So, you know, that that uh, that helps. What I do like about this is once you do put a couple drops of water in and it does open that up, it takes out that horrible back end. I don't like a bad back end uh, liquor. I don't. I, I like something that's going to be smooth. I don't want something that's just like... Because with this, um, when I when I first tried it, it just sits. You know, it just it just sat like it. It kind of rests like right about here mm. in your throat, and then like kind of here, and then you feel the warmth kind of go into your belly. Uh, but what I do like is you can taste the, the 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 sort of corn kind of mash um, grain. You can taste that real heavy in this, mm. but it's not overwhelming once you put the water in. So. If I had to give this a rating, let's do. Do you want to do five, like between one and five stars? You yeah, do a we stars. Do one and five stars. Uh, I would give it. I would give it three. It'd get a three star for me. It's not. Yeah, this sounds like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't drink this. Like if I saw it in a store, and I saw a bottle of Crown in this, it would be Crown all day. Mm -hmm. Now there's some for for you folks out there that like that kind of rougher bourbon esque Kentucky style whiskey. This is right up your alley. You know, for folks that like that smoother kind of fine tasting when it comes to whiskey, um, almost fine like I guess uh, Patron is. You know, Patron is a tequila, but it's really smooth. It doesn't really bite you. Uh, the silver, especially. I'm, I, you know, I used to really like the the, the silver tequila, um, and then I kind of went into whiskey a little bit. But uh, as far as wise as whiskeys go, this is good. This one's getting three for me. No, sure. what we should do before I give my rating, we should actually give it like a. A, a one to five somethings that reflects this uncanny earth, right? So, one to five. Five one five uncanny earths out of one five. five uh, um, three Saint Germains, three Bigfoots, oh, yeah, yeah. three Cryptids. We could do three Saint Germains. Three Saint Germains. Give it three Saint Germains. Three Saint Germains. Um. So I'll give a couple pros. Uh. One. Uh. It, it's 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 a good warming whiskey. It's it's gonna warm you up. You're gonna mm -hmm. feel it like I'm warm right now. Um, another one is you, the 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 flavor palettes are, are fantastic. I enjoy the flavor palettes on it. My cons, it takes water to really make it taste better, to open it up, and uh, it's not something that that's really smooth on your first sip. And those are those would be my my two pros and two cons. <clears throat> if I had to give two pros, two cons. No, I'm gonna give it. Uh... I've been trying to go back and forth whether to give it three or four. I feel like I want to give it four because I, I kind of like heavier whiskeys, but then I sip them more. I'm more of a sipper anyway. When I'm at home, I'm, I'm, I'm a sipper. But I'll give it a three. Not because I think it's bad, but because it is pretty heavy. It, it's not something that you can just kind of pull out and drink socially and just be like, hey, everybody, let's have a bunch of that slip on number nine. I'm sure some people would be like, "Yeah, let's get this slipper number number nine, and let's, let's just go crazy." Uh, but I'm I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too old for that. I don't do that. I like to sit, sip on my whiskey, get a light enough buzz that everything's good with the world, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. sit on my couch and play some games. Or something. That's I don't I don't want to be sitting there being like, "Oh man, I drank all that whiskey and now I'm so drunk. I can't." What's the controller say? <laughs> oh man, oh. I don't like that. And this is a whiskey that I'll do that too. Yeah, if you if you just go at it really unprepared. So um so three Saint Germains for me as well. Um so I think that's a consensus. Uh yeah, we're gonna Saint Germains. We're gonna go ahead and fist bump on fist it. Fist bump through Saint Germains. That's right. Um uh, is there anything else we want to say about yeah, that? Yeah, I'd actually like to say something. <clears throat> Thank you to our Patreon donors, uh Elizabeth Wittenberry. You'll be the one of the first people to see us sampling this. And mm -hmm. it's uh you know, I, I think that putting it in the... F and so this is this is the thing. Uh, we didn't really get to try it warm. Um, I mean, room temp, not warm. Because uh, I put it in the freezer. Because mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, of, of like, with whiskey, though, I'd like the taste of a more uh, chilled taste of whiskey. Uh, now, I, I really like whiskey the best when it's on ice. Like with, with ice cubes, I think it... Because, you know, like he said... Once the ice starts melting, it starts kind of opening up the flavor. Because every time you ever pour whiskey in, I'm a, I'm a brandy fan. I like cognac. 
I can rice. You know, get a little, get a, a little uh, tumbler or whatever, mason dress. And that's a key so. difference between the two of us. He's he's a nice guy. I, I drink everything, almost everything, room temperature. Yeah, I drink Guinness room temperature. And people are just like, what? Yeah, this is okay room temperature. But, I mean, overseas, I mean, they don't drink it room temperature, but they drink right. it slightly cooled, just like in right. in a cool area. So I can't get that here without making it too cold. Mm-hmm. So I just drink it, you know, slightly roomish. Me, I like it ice. I like uh, some ice. A little bit of, uh, you know, about two cubes. Two cubes of ice, depending on the shape of your ice tray. And then put the two cubes of ice in, pour the whiskey over top of it so it melts just a little bit of it. Um, but the best part about it is that first sip of the whiskey when you're drinking it, because the first sip will always be the bite. It'll be the snake bite. It just ah, and latches on. And then every other sip after that just keeps getting smoother and smoother. But you want to make sure that you get your hand in there. Either. Um, no, that's right. You get the mic. Oh, um, but you want to make sure that you drink it before the ice come like gets too close to melting. So what I do is I'll probably make an ice tray and then I'll put two ice cubes in, pour it. When I'm done, I throw the ice cubes out. That's a reminder. You need new ice trays. Yeah, new ice trays. <laughs> Otherwise, we probably would have done that. Send me some. Whoever's watching this kid does send me some. Unless you have some that you need to spit that you're sparing. Send them to me. Send us links to, for like paranormal cryptid ice trays that aren't so that we can make, we can buy one and we can make like Mothman uh, I was one cubes. of the Death Star one. There's one that's just a Death Star ball. It's pretty cool, but make sure you throw out your old ice and get new ice in your glass because old ice is going to ruin the flavor. And I know some people probably think, well, ice ruins it in general, um, but I like ice because when you take room temperature whiskey and put ice and then pour the ice over it, it gets to chill. So you're with the chilling process pretty much until the end. And then you uh, you throw your ice out, you pour your new glass, and it's like having a new, have a new sip of whiskey. So you're, mm. you're, you're good to go. Three out of four. Three out of five St. Germains for the Iowa number nine whiskey. And the reason why it's number nine is because there's nine members in Slipknot. That's right. That's where they got the number nine from. I'm yep. not a big Slipknot fan, but even I know that. So. Yep, that's right. It's a, it's a pretty big band. Um, if anybody's not familiar with them, I mean, they are pretty heavy, and some of their stuff is kind of juvenile. So not as much yeah. as their old stuff. Their oldest stuff is is more like that than their newer stuff. Like but, Iowa um, was super heavy. Yeah, it, it definitely takes some getting used to. So... Anyway, even if you're not a member of the band, or a member, obviously, <laughs> well, obviously, even if you're not a fan of the band, you can probably still enjoy this on a certain level, depending on if you've liked our description and you want to give it a try, by all means. If you do that, let us know that you tried it. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear your own impressions about it, yeah, and sure uh, would, and sure we'd address would. it in another future uh, Uncanny Spirits Club video. Sure. We'd like to get a collection of different people's stories of the things that we drink. Mm-hmm. Sure would. So then, then we can talk about those or on future drink. episodes. Even they drink. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you drink you drink a certain bottle of whiskey. Cool, you know. Let us know, and mm-hmm. we'll try it if if it's within our budget. Whiskeys aren't cheap, you know. Yeah, um, our budget for this kind of thing for Uncanny Spirits is going to be um, since it's once a month, we might be able to swing like fifty bucks or less mm-hmm. for now. Right. We're we're working right. up to trying to get like those hundred and fifty dollar Crown Royal Special Reserve things, right. but those are oh man, those are pretty pricey. Um, one hundred fifty bucks is not a, something I have pretty often. So a couple recommendations before we jump up out of here. Uh, Canadian Club uh, is mm. very good. The XO, get the XO. Um, what's the one? Pikes Creek. Pikes Creek's good. Now, Pikes Creek, you're it's, it might taste funny to some of you because it's aged in a rum barrel. It's not mm. aged in a, uh, in a in a regular. I don't, I don't know how tequila or how tequila how whiskey's made one hundred percent, but usually in oak barrels specifically. Right. But the the Pikes Creek is uh, aged in oak barrels that have already had rum in them previously. That has kind of soaked into the wood. Which I'm a big fan of. I like the Pikes Creek. Um, and then the other one that I really enjoyed that we got was uh, Pendleton. Pendleton. Uh, Pendleton was good. He, I don't think he liked it as much. As Not it. as much. I don't remember what it was about it that, that threw me off. It almost had it had that like lighter fluid kind of <laughs> kind of taste when you first take take a drink out of it. Some whiskeys they have that when you take the first taste, it's like just gasoline at first, <laughs> and then the flavor kicks in. But it's that first thing that kind of spoils it for me. I like that first one to kind of hook me in right, and, and right, keep it right. going for the rest of it. So, yeah, there it is, guys. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Spirits Club. Um, Iowa, number nine, Slipknot, Corn Mash. 
gets three of the saintliest of Germains out of five. That's right. Three. So you know the rules. Stay in king. That's right. Catch you guys next time.